Grim Turtle's real good. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you how good Grim Turtle is. In a minute, right now, we got to talk about doubles Mook and yeah. Smash Factor's Huga up against Smash World Gaming's Jason and Slaps. Slaps. So we have, I assume, Pikachu and Toon Link, of course, coming against Ike and Fox. Mook, yeah. Uh, Mook here going to be playing Fox, right? Fox. Against uh, Jason's Fox. <laughs> and uh, we're, we're gonna have two foxes on the screen. Oh, we're, oh, we're playing a little eight players first. Okay, I'd right, be ready. All right. I'd be I, ready. I, okay. What's, what's the four v four meta like? I don't know. I bet it's full of chaos, though. Probably. I, 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 I want the two v two v two meta. Man. The only the only complaint I have about a player though is that why is yellow color only available on a player Smash? Can we have yellow for four? Can we have can we have yellow for just regular Smash doubles? Come on now. It's brutal, man. Yeah. But anyway, that's not my favorite color. Green is my favorite color. Go green. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, we have two Foxes on the screen. Um, and we have Ike and Toon Link. Of course, Toon Link being the one and only Hugo. Um, so we're going to go into this match. I feel like the stop tanks for each is going to come out from both of the Foxes, actually. I feel like both of the Foxes are going to play a good amount of stop tanks. Really? Yeah, I feel like Hugo is going to be the offensive line because, of course, his Toon Link is amazingly offensive. He's got all the projectiles to go in. And then meanwhile, you have Slaps with the big damage. It's like, Jason's going to throw out some of the damage, and then Slaps is going to come in and make the kills pretty quick. But he's also going to stay out of the way. Man, hopefully. I, I, I can't help but think about how classy Fox can be. I mean, he's Sure, he's like really, really he can combo like crazy. You get those kill confirms at high percents. Uh, if he can just you know find something like a down air, but the issue is he's one of the lightest characters in the game. I, it's gonna be so tough for him to hold and on. And not to mention he's also a fast faller. And fast fallers uh, they get comboed a lot. And wow, we are already seeing this blue team with the first stock out. That's actually a bit of a surprise. Slaps is playing uh, a pretty simple game overall. He's doing retreating aerials to consistently clip at Mook, who's trying to find his way in. And because of Ike's range, the fadeback that he's doing allows him to cover so much distance from a pretty safe ground. And, and right there, it looked like he auto-canceled the aerial into the forward zone. Hugo was too concentrated on J trying to get the kill off of Jason, and Slaps comes in, takes, off, takes, takes him unexpectedly, and there goes Hugo Sock. This is a surprising... The forward smash? Yep, the forward smash is going to do it. Yeah, Toon Link you, forward smash. You know, Tracy, you're absolutely right. This is really surprising to watch out for. I I, I definitely didn't expect uh, Blue to have these early stocks, but the question is whether or not they're going to be able to retain the momentum as the set progresses. Oh, but the up, but the up air is going to do it, and Mook is, Mook is already at 106% on his second stock. This is... Is he going to come back? No, he's not going to make it back. Hugo, can't re Hugo really couldn't do much. He was trapped in the sandwich between Slaps and Jason. And what more can you really do about that? He do a whole lot of anything. Mook already at his last stock. And like we said, it's just it's just that Fox is too glassy to be playing the tank. Hugo, on the other hand, he, because of how defensive he can be, he can retain the stocks a bit easier by creating space and carpet bombing with projectiles. Jason coming back behind Hugo whiffs the pivot grab, and Hugo gets a good amount of percent off of him for that. An air now from Slaps. But that's going to leave him open to, to Mook. He's going to come in and using the quick speed, break the zone with the dash attack. Hugo just waiting for Slaps to throw out a move so he can punish it. And whoop. Instead, it's going to finish off Slap's stop. And now we're actually pretty, and now we're actually free in favor. Now the green team actually takes back the lead. Hugo with, of course, his comeback battle. Hugo, I don't know for what reason, Hugo always seems to have a major comeback factor. I don't know what it is, but Hugo is just your comeback, man. If you want a comeback to happen and it's Hugo on the screen, it's expected to come. The big thing is how good he is at reading the opponent. Right? Hugo's and, reads are um, phenomenal. And that's why at first he might not be doing so well in a, in a game or a set, but as time progresses, expect the rounds to be much more convincing. Yes. Jason and Slaps on the other hand, if we talk about right now, they're putting in so much work. There's team chemistry, yeah, fantastic, and the option coverage there, that quick up tilt from Slaps, sending Mook skyward, and now Hugo in a 2v1. This you is going to be... A, a Herculean task. This is going to be quite a right. We have a good combo damage spot against a hard hitting bot slaps, which is I. So, side view after stage, of course, being avoided by the tether. 
And they have some friendly fire coming out from Blue. They're gonna clean, they have to clean it up if they want to make sure they can close this game out. Uh, you mean Jason Nova right there? And we're seeing a lot of aggressive aerial options. Hugo's very content to stick in his shield because he knows that, you know, the worst that could happen is a, is a grab. He's Huge. not really even expecting the grab, but he hasn't been conditioned to expect it. They've only been going for these aggressive, aggressive options to start. Hugo's actually doing really well making this comeback happen. A small amount of damage, but the damage is... Ooh, tried to go for the... Oh my goodness, that'll do for the wow. stop, the reading up smash. Jason knocked out, slaps, has to go toe to toe with one of the best in the world, the, the read. The Hugo. roll read, he Hugo, knows he's please. got slaps scared here. Hugo, are you gonna? Are you about to do this? Hugo, Hugo, please. A stock away from going huge and clutching it out for Mook. Oh, Ooh, that air, the air dodge. Let's grab. Not gonna get much off of it, just a just quick going. set of pummels to rack on the percentage. And Ooh, the another roll away, and Huga snuffing it out and twice in a row. And as we discussed, Huga has phenomenal reading abilities. He will be able to determine, he basically knows where you're going before you even press the button. It, it, it was the reads on offense whenever that. it was the beginning of that last stock for Huga. And it was the reads on defense that allowed him to close it out at the Oh, end. yes. He played reads on every single part of the doubles you could possibly do, and he made it all work. Hugo with the fantabulous comeback, and that'll do it for oh. game one. And now we're going to go for game two. We're going to have to go to Battlefield? All right, so we're going to Battlefield, game two. Now, how do you feel about this counterpick, actually? Do you feel like this will work for both teams, or...? I think that Ike is, at times, a win-more sort of character. Like, when he hits you with the KO option, it doesn't matter how big the stage is, you're gonna die. Yeah. You're, you're gonna die. Uh, and, and with that in mind, I guess they want to maybe use this sort of a stage uh, to make the most of that aspect while simultaneously making it so that they can have, uh, I guess, a, a larger life expectancy. Beyond that, Ike also has great coverage on the platforms, uh, which would come into play if we see situations where Green gets stranded on them. Mm -hmm. Platforms can be pretty deadly. So Yuga and Mook taking quick percentage. They're actually doing much better in the beginning of this game than they did in game one. Game one, they started off with a lot of damage. Mook eventually losing his first stock. But now Jason loses his first stock. So we have the Fox trade of stocks. So we have Mook's Fox losing his first stock game one. And in game two, we have Jason's Fox losing his first stock. But Jason quick to retort, getting the up smash on Mook. And right bringing the stock, back, stock count back to even. The friendly fire, however, is making the percent matter so much here as Hyuga slices up a stock for himself for the forward smash. That's the one thing about Toon Lake. His forward smash is pretty strong. Now we're just going to be able to play. Hyuga is just putting on all of the pressure on their shields. That is one thing I see about Hugo against Slaps most of the time. Slaps against Slaps against Hugo. He's trying to expect Hugo to go in for aerials, but Hugo is just going in there not with not only with aerials, but he's also got projectiles in hand to create so much pressure on his shield. And when he and when Slaps releases the shield, it's either going to be the projectile hitting him or it's going to be him. Slaps all. I thought we were going to be seeing a sandwich for a moment between Mook and Hyuga. The conversion for one second. The fourth throw into the back here. Not going to kill, though. And this is looking like a lot of punishment. Again, we're seeing Hyuga playing the stock tank role in this team comp. And the forward smash going to do it again. He really is a, the, the one size fits all. He's holding on to the stocks. He's getting all the KOs. He's going huge. Hugo, Hugo is basically like that big deal you found while shopping. You're like, this is such a good deal. I got someone who can not only play offense, but someone who can play defense too, and he does it so well. Oh, so perfectly well. I mean, what more, what more could you want? You want a teammate who can do it all, and Hugo is that perfect teammate. Jason coming back on the stage. We have a little bit of FOTS action off the stage, but now they're coming back to the stage. Jason going to trade off for Hugo. Up there, not gonna quite do yeah, it. Yeah, they, they want to take that time to try to set up for a 2v1 on Mook, but they couldn't have the communication on point in order to deal out the optimal amount of the, damage. The double up there coming up from not only Hugo, but Mook as well, and that'll end Jason's stock. Ooh, and maybe if he slaps his stock, he does able to fight, he is able to find a way back onto the stage, but for how long? Ooh, Ooh. trying to go for a very aggressive option there, trying to close out 
But instead, he's able to clip Mook on the way out. He got the down there, but it didn't kill. So a lot of good damage. That'll do it for Hugo stock. One more stock left for Hugo, but he's in a fresh stock, so not a lot. So not a lot to worry about. Yeah, you're right. Blue is blue is looking beaten and, and battered here. I don't know if they're going to be able to, to really make them make all that much off of the Hugo at the ledge, just getting all these back throws. The large blast zones from their counter pick are allowing them to survive. That back throw is one of the strongest in the game. The Again. reads. Hugo getting these reads. Hugo is just so good with these reads. I just can't stop talking about it. Yeah, they are amazing. Jason in the 2v1 now. It was hard enough when it was just Hugo. Now with Mook in play as well. Ah. Nah. You have you have a reading master and a bots, so you, it, this is pretty tough. But that that'll do for the stock. So Jason gets Hugo, but Hugo pretty much has a fresh stock on hand, and Hugo also has these good reads. So I expect a good read coming out ready. And I predicted that wow. so well. That's brutal. I, that was I knew that was coming from a mile away. Hugo was going to end that stock one way or another with a read. Hugo, my goodness. This reading master. He went to the library, public publicly read every he single has a library book. card. He yep. has a he has a platinum status library yeah, card. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He, he 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 went to the book of every single player in DFW, read up on what they do a lot, and said I got these reads. He got the pan pizza from Pizza Hut, man. <laughs> that's how good his reads are. That, that's how good his reads are. Shout outs, 90s kids. Yep. They know what I'm talking about. I, I was born in 98, but I've heard so much about that. The before. pan pizzas, man. That was the best. Back in the day, you'd like read an X number of books, and they'd give you like a free pizza from Pizza Hut. It was amazing. That was That's really cool. Nah, that makes me wish I was born. <laughs> There's a lot of things that make me wish I was actually born in the 90s, even though I was born in 98. You know, so now, I don't count. Now, now I, I have to look. Whether or not there's a Pizza Hut near me, I, I'm gonna have to be tagged out pretty soon uh, <laughs> just, just, just to get some food in me. But just take the quick tag out and just go get some pizza. Why not? I mean, I got we gotta find somebody to replace me first. I could have it delivered. <laughs> you could have it delivered. This is true. I could have it delivered. There's actually one like 0.02 miles away from me. Really? That's godlike. That's like that's like right next door. That's right next door. Perfect. Oh my god, that's way too good. Yeah. Just, uh, just tell them, like, hey, we're, like, next door to you. Just bring a pizza over here. Could you please? Now, for me, pizza fanatic, though, I'm not much of a pizza fanatic. I'm I'm all cheese. That's it. <laughs> dude, pizza's so good, man. Yeah, this pizza is very good. My Yo, favorite. Dude, pizza's too good. I found where I'm going to go eat. I found where I'm going to go eat. <laughs> Uh, well, we just got to go eat eventually, and then eventually I have to go play my tournament match, which I don't know if I have to play yet. I'll check. Let me look one second and see if I have to play my match. Yep. I don't believe I do because eventually, because usually doubles tournaments go really slow. How do you know if you can play your match? Do you have, like, we have Chilla Lounge right here. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. You can look on Chilla Lounge on your I board. thought you meant, like, you had that on your phone. Mm. And I was like, that's proprietary information. No. Tracy. Girl, how you getting this? Excuse me, but I don't take any secrets if nobody wants me to. I'm not gonna invade anybody's secrets. I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah, I don't. Okay, so my doubles match is not quite ready yet. Uh, shout out to my little Luma. I love him. Do you have a name for your little Luma? Greenie. That makes sense. Why not? I guess mean, it make more sense than like Jackie, I guess. If you're gonna go for the IEs, you might as well look at it. Like that's a greenie if I've ever seen one. Gun Gunblade has some weird names for him too, but shout out to Gunblade for his names. They're really cool too. What's Gunblade? Uh, how does Gunblade know you? Gunblade, he doesn't actually know me. I just know that he names his Luma. I just know that from his commentary a lot, he names Lumas really weirdly. Oh, definitely. And then I also have this crown, so that's cool. The crown. Everybody, everybody knows. Everybody, for anybody who doesn't watch me every single week, I always wear this crown. So if you see me on stream, you'll see me wearing this crown. You gotta wear the crown. Yeah, always. Uh, and that's and that reminded me of my cosplay that's coming up in Smash Bros. I'm actually gonna be cosplaying Rosalia, so that'll be nice. awesome. Nice. Yeah. So it should be. Yeah, it should be really awesome. You're really excited for it. I've always been excited for Smash Bros. Smash Bros. is just like the tournament of my pretty much my entire Smash career because I haven't been to a big of a tournament as this one. And plus, I'm gonna meet so many good friends that I've.